Hey there, nation, and welcome to the show where we help you to play miniatures wargaming on a budget. It is I, Commander Cheapskate, and we are back with an episode of Cheap Shots, and these videos are dedicated to showing you specifically which ways you can save money on the miniature wargaming hobby. And traditionally, whenever I usually do, usually do a cheap shot, I usually do a painting tutorial of some sort because usually, most of the time, a lot of players will actually spend a lot of money on name brand paints or paint their miniatures. And I, of course, like using craft paints because they're cheaper, they do exactly the same thing for the most part, and at the same time, save you hundreds of dollars on your uh, expenses for your miniatures but this time around though i've been focusing on using kill team box sets to use in games of necromunda and the reason why is for a couple reasons one these sculpts are really excellent they have a lot of character very interesting as well secondly a lot of people like to play kill team because it doesn't cost very much money to play you can still play in the new warhammer 40,000 universe and save a lot of money doing it because all you need is a box set of miniatures and that kind of lends itself pretty well to playing necromunda being able to use the same box set of miniatures for multiple gaming systems is the ultimate goal for any war gamer and the reason why is because these miniatures are quite expensive so if you can use a box of miniatures for one two three or more games then you are basically winning at saving money and that's exactly what this channel is dedicated to doing so because of that what we're gonna do in this video we're gonna specifically talk about using kill team novitiates which are from the sisters of battle line and we're gonna talk about how using these ladies in your games of necromunda and how best to do so we're gonna do a couple of things first of all we're gonna talk about the narrative behind this gang and how it could fit narratively speaking within the underhive we're also going to provide information about how this game will actually play on the tabletop and using some tips and tricks to actually be successful with this gang we're also going to provide you a roster rated at 2,000 points so that way you can play in aranthian succession campaigns which are the largest campaigns available in a necromunda uh, setting with just this one box of miniatures which could be amazing and we're going to show you exactly how to use this gang on the tabletop on the uh, by giving you a gang overview and showing you exactly how you maneuver your forces in order to defeat your opponent and then last to give you our overall conclusion about using this box set for necromunda so that being said i have this because a little bit more of a deeper dive i do have uh, time links down in the description box below that you can navigate to to wherever part interests you the most so that being said let's get this video review on a roll so the first thing we need to address, of course, is the narrative background of these miniatures as well. Unfortunately, there's a lot of players who are going to have a lot of pushback with this using uh, Kill Team box sets in Necromunda, which I really don't get because as far as most of my gaming group and I are concerned, and most gamers, most people are pretty chillax with you using different miniatures from different gaming systems in games because miniatures are expensive and we all know this going in. But in case if someone gives you pushback on it, this is the narrative you're going to give to your opponents and we're going to tell them why you're allowed to do this. First of all, these ladies have a really cool kind of monastic kind of vibe going on with them as well. They would fit perfectly for House Kaldor. House Kaldor has this very interesting religious fanatic from the Middle Ages type look. They have hoods and cowls, they wear robes, they have a lot of religious iconography all over themselves and they're also religious fanatics. The only problem though is that there's not very many female sculpts available for Kaldor gangs. So because of that, this box that specifically would fit perfectly in there. Now, Granted, Kaos Kaldor is awesome. You could actually use this gang as a Kaldor list, but we're actually going to do something a little bit different, and that's because we're going to use a Outcast gang list uh, using House Kaldor rules in order to help these guys out. And the reason why is because House Kaldor has horrible stats, just like an Outcast gang, but their weapons are really good, and the equipment they have is really good as well. Unfortunately for Kaldor players, though, the weapons and equipment that are powerful are split between the two factions of a House Kaldor gang. You have the legal, well, le as it is, legal -er, I guess, or more legal uh house counter gang list and then you have the redemptionists which are outlaws the two of them have very specific equipment and they can't really swap between the two of them which is kind of tragic but an outcast gang that's not an issue because as an outcast gang especially if you're a house outcast gang you could take any weapon from the house list that you have and you could put it for any one of your fighters that you want and that's going to be a really great way to make this gang really powerful you're going to take a uh, repetition where redemption is weapons and equipment counter weapons and equipment you're going to combine them together to make a really powerful list and because it's an outcast gang it's going to have really uh powerful abilities because you have access to psychic abilities and that's what's going to lead into the narrative of this gang this gang is a house counter outcast game because members of their gang have psychic abilities which anybody who reads the lord uh, Calder knows that oh my god that's anthema and they must be destroyed for doing so so because of that that's why they're kicked out of their house because they have psychic abilities so this gang is on crusade for dependence for themselves to try to purify themselves through pain for having these psychic abilities now while that's the narrative behind it though it's actually towards your favor because this table is going to dominate as well so now that we're going to talk about the narrative background of why you'd be able to use the novitiates in your games Necromunda, let's go and talk about exactly how they'll play on the tabletop. 
All right, so let's talk about the play style real quick. So this gang is not for the timid or the cautious. If you're one of those kind of players that likes to hang back and shoot at your enemies and play kind of cautiously, this is, list is not for you. Okay, I'm just gonna say that right at first most. The reason why is because this list is a highly aggressive build with close quarters battle in mind. This is where our gang wants to get in close, they wanna give them close range, they wanna use their template weapons, they wanna use their powerful close combat weapons, they wanna be aggressive in the fight. Now, traditionally speaking, gangs that have that sort of build, a close quarters battle, uh, build. The problem that they run into though is that they don't really have a lot of good defense in order to protect themselves while they approach their enemy. They usually get shot to pieces by the time they get close to their enemies and they may be able to kill a, inflict a couple of casualties but they slowly just get killed off through uh, attrition. That is not going to be the case with this gang because even though this gang is a close quarters battle gang, it's going to be highly defensive. They're going to have a lot of armor buffs in order to help them out. And because you have psychic abilities, what we're going to do is we're going to like to create what I like to call the hive mind build. Uh, for those of you guys who are longtime viewers of the channel, you might be familiar with this build. This is where we're going to be exploiting the unbreakable willpower from the telepathy tree in order to help trigger your champions in order to trigger off their, uh, their psychic abilities and make it even better and, and, and protect a lot of your fighters using telekinesis force shield in order to do that. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in detail when we actually talk about the play style, when we actually go on the tabletop and show you exactly how you're gonna use this gang. So with the play style now in mind, if this appeals to you, let's go ahead and talk about the roster and exactly what you're gonna include in this gang at 2000 points. All right, so this is the Kill Team Sisters of Battle Novitiates House Caldor Outcast Gang for Naranthian Succession. It's going to be rated at 1,995 credits, which you're going to have five credits level over to do whatever you want with. So let's go ahead and talk about what's going to be in this list. First of all, your Novitiate Superior, which is the leader of the box, it's going to be your Outcast Leader in this gang, and she's going to cost you 320 credits. She's got close combat stats because you get to choose what stat line you want, and you're going to give her the weird archetype. And the reason why you're choosing close combat stats is because of the excellent psychological uh, characteristics that that stat line does have, especially when it comes to cool and willpower, specifically willpower. Now you're gonna give her armor of mesh armor, so we give her five up armor save, as well as a gutter forge cloak, which is gonna drop that armor save to a four up armor save. At the same time, you'll have a five aboard save against all elemental attacks, uh, environmental effects. This mesh armor gutter forge cloak is gonna be throughout the entire list, so keep that in mind. Now for her weapon, she's gonna have a plasma pistol for obvious reasons, as well as a chain sword for obvious reasons as well. She's also gonna have a photo goggles as well as a respirator as well, so so that way she can fight in the dark and she can also worry about toxin and gas trait weapons as well. You're going to give her a cult icon to give her a larger group activation so that way she can activate three fighters every turn and at the same time she's going to take the telepathy discipline with fearful aura which means that your opponents will take a willpower test in her attacker in close combat and unbreakable will which is going to transfer her cool and her willpower within range to all her fighters. The will cool part, not so important. The willpower part, that's the thing that's going to be really important. I should also mention that all of your fighters will have photo goggles respirators so that way they can fight in all conditions as well. Now your first champion is going to be a Novitiate Pregatus. It's going to be your outcast champion. She's going to cost you 270 credits. She's going to have a weird archetype as well as mesh armor and a gutter forge cloak for the reasons that we mentioned earlier. She's going to have an auto gun with a flamber combo weapon for flaming attacks as well as an auto pistol for close combat and backup weapon. She's going to have a photo goggles respirator as well as a telekinesis discipline with fists of fury which gives her bonuses to close combat with her fists which I don't think is all that impressive and a force shield which is what you really want to have her do now outcast champions have horrible willpower stats but when you combine that with the unbreakable will what you're going to do is you're going to transfer the novitiate superiors willpower score to all of her champions which means they're going to get those force shields off even easier which adds you plus one to your saves so everyone who's in the range will no longer have a four armor save they'll have a three up armor save and if you can get them within range of the second champion it's exactly the same uh, second abilities they'll drop it down to a three up armor save so keep that in mind and this also includes their environmental saves too so four our environmental saves absolutely fantastic after that you have your second champion who's gonna be your novitiate condemner she's gonna cast 225 credits she's gonna have a weird archetype as well with mesh armor and gutter forge cloak she's gonna have a grenade launcher with frag and crack grenades for obvious reasons as well as auto pistol for a backup weapon in close combat she has photo goggles respirators as well as telekinesis discipline with fists of fury as well as force shield so those are those defensive things i was talking about earlier you're gonna have buffs for your armor saves and your environmental saves like nobody else and it's gonna be absolutely unstoppable now from there you're gonna have your novitiate Penitent. She's going to be your Outcast Hive Champion, costing 180 credits. She has Mesh Armor, Gutter Forge Cloak, and Eviscerator for close combat and for flaming attacks, as well as photo goggles and a respirator. 
Your Novitiate Duelist will be your outcast, another outcast life scum at 180 credits. She's got mesh armor and gutter forge cloak, as well as a master crafted great sword, so that way she can get those re-rolls in case she mits. And that sever ability in the great sword to really get chop up your opponents. She has auto pistol for backup weapon, as well as photo goggles and respirator. Your Evitiate Exactor will be another Hive Scum at 150 credits. She's got Mesh Armor and Gutter Forge Cloak as well as a Flail and an Auto Pistol for Close Combat Attacks. She's also got Photo Goggles as well as a Respirator. And then your Novitiate Reliquarius is going to be another outcast I have scum at 150 credits. She has mesh armor as well as a gutter forge cloak and a pole arm blunderbuss with grape and brigation shot for her weapons. And she's also got foil goggles and respirator. So another really powerful template weapon for attacks. And she's also got really good close combat attacks as well. Your Novitiate Preceptor will be another outcast I have scum at 170 credits. She has mesh armor as well as a gutter forge cloak, a two-handed hammer for close combat attacks with an exterminator for a one-shot flamer. She has auto pistol for a backup weapon as well as photo goggles as well as respirator. Your novitiate militant is another outcast hive scum at 150 credits. She's got mesh armor as well as gutter forge cloak, an auto gun with exterminator, so that way she can do a close and long distance shooting, and the exterminator is a one-shot flamer as well. With an auto pistol for close combat attacks and as a backup weapon, she also has photo goggles and a respirator. And your novitiate pronatus is another outcast hive scum equipped exactly the same way as before at 150 credits with mesh armor, gutter forge cloak, auto gun with exterminator, auto pistol, photo goggles, as well as a respirator. You're also going to spend 50 credits on a rogue dock because it's going to be very important for you in a Ranthian succession campaign. Now, for your gang overview, you're going to have three assault fire teams in this gang. Your assault fire team number one will consist of your novitiate superior, your novitiate your penitent, your doulas, and your preceptor. Assault fire number team number two will consist of your brigatus, your militant, as well as your exactor. And then assault fire team number three will consist of your condemner, your pronatus, as well as your reliquarius. And that is the list that you're going to create using this outcast house counter list for your sisters of battle novitiates. So now that we're going to talk about exactly what this roster entails, let's go and talk about exactly what's going to happen with this gang on the tabletop with the gang overview. And we're going to talk about that next. All right, so here we are on my desktop. So let's go on and talk about exactly how you will be using your kill team novitiates in your games of Necromunda. So first of all, let's go on and talk about the roster real quick. So I'm going to shrink this down a little bit so that way you guys can see this a little bit better. So as you can see, we have our fire team overview over here with our different assault fire teams. Uh, we have three of them that you guys will be using in this gang as well. And then over here, I'm going to open this up real fast. I have a little bit of a PowerPoint presentation over here to show you guys exactly how you'll be using this gang as well. So like I said before, you have three different fire teams on this one you'll have one assault fire team assault fire team number two and assault fire team number three Assault Fire Team number one will consist of your Superior, which is represented by this bubble here at the S, your Penitent, which is represented by this P over here, your Novitiate Duelist, which is Indy over here, and your Novitiate Preceptor, which is this character over here as well. And then afterwards, of course, you have your Assault Team Fire Team number two, which is up here, which will consist of your Novitiate uh, uh, Extractor, your Militant, as well as your Perga uh, Pergatus, and then your Assault Fire Team number three over here will consist of your Condemner, as well as your Pronatus, as well as your Relicarius. Now, the reason why we have it laid out this way, which you want to do is you want to keep your deployment kind of close together right within a couple of inches of each other and the reason why is because this is a hive mind build which means that you'll be using your unbreakable will ability from your leader which is this character over here to trigger your champions so that way they can get the cool the willpower stat from your leader and transfer it to your champions so that way they can get off their second abilities even better and that's pretty much how it's going to work now up here on the top we have your enemies which represent your two different hexes over here for your enemies fire teams let's talk about how this will work so first of all the first thing you're going to do is you're going to actually going to trigger your uh, leader and she's going to use her unbreakable willpower to kind of send that off so that way everybody within range of that second ability has her cool stats as well as her willpower stats now the cool stats of course is nice in case anybody gets injured which is great for outcast gangs because outcast gangs have horrible psychology stats but with this uh, leader though having the coast combat build that cool will translate to your uh, uh, fighters as well which is automatic because she's a leader anyways what you really want this for is the cool stat, because with that cool stat uh, being transferred to the champions, the champions are going to have a much easier time of actually triggering their psychic powers as well. So that's the first thing that your leader is going to do. What's going to happen from there, of course, is that your champions are also going to have concentric intersecting circles like this. All right, it's pretty much how it's going to work. Because what they're, they're going to do is they're going to uh, use their telekinesis abilities to trigger their force shield abilities. Is pretty much what it's going to do. What this is going to do, ideally, this is how it's going to work. By doing this, 
by creating this little bubble of support from psychic abilities. All of your fighters within these concentric circles will then have plus one added to their saves because of force shield. So all these guys have mesh armor with gutter force cloaks that gives them a four up armor save. If they're in the span of one of your champions bubbles, for example, that will drop down to a three armor save. But if your fighters are within this, let's say, sweet spot here between these two different circles of power kind of like going into each other, so like kind of like this, uh, what's going to happen is that they're going to have plus two added to their armor saves. So they go from armor save four to armor save three, from armor save three to armor save two, which means your enemy is going to have a really, really, really hard time trying to put any wounds directly onto your fighters because they're all relatively acting together. What you're going to do is you're going to take your forces and they're going to assault in mass going forward directly towards your enemies. Now try to keep your people in line as much as you possibly can until the final assault. The reason why is because, once again, this gang build is primarily a close quarters combat gang uh, with close quarters combat. So because of that, the problem with that is usually if you have a close quarters combat oriented gang, they usually get shot off the table for the chance to even get a chance to close with their enemies. But by doing this and using these concentric rings, if you will, of power to kind of help out each of your different fighters get buffs in the armor saves, they're going to have a much easier time of actually surviving getting shot at. And that's the reason why we have so much of our psychic abilities being used on this to do this, so that way everyone is saved. Now by the time you close in with your enemy to where they were then striking distance of your shorter range weapons, by that point you can stop using the psychic abilities and just go in for the assault. What you're going to do of course is open up with flamer template weapons upon your enemy, so that way you can set enemies on fire. And while those guys are on fire, of course, they're also going to have to worry about blaze tests, running away, guys being pinned, and also guys getting caught on fire and running around disrupting your enemy's formations. And then from there, of course, you can just close and destroy with close quarters combat. You have a lot of excellent close combat weapons for a lot of the members of your gang with with uh, auto pistols as well as uh, two-handed hammers with your uh, eviscerators, with your pole arms, etc. You can set guys off. You also have exterminators too, which you could also use that one-shot flamer to set people on fire and also close a distance with your enemy as well. And because the entire gang is equipped with respirators, if your enemy has toxin weapons, it's going to protect them from being toxin, uh, toxined out. And if your enemy is fighting and uh, has mutated powers where they can turn off the lights or whatever, it doesn't matter. You have photo goggles, so you can still fight in all environments and still survive as well. Not to mention, if you decide to take out the ash waste, you do have gutter forge cloaks, which gives you a 5-up armor save against environmental effects, which will also protect you as well. Or if you have random events taking place in the underhive, that will also help too. And so this could be an absolute combination of win in order to destroy your enemies as well. It's one of the coolest things to come out with the Outcast list. And in fact, my little sister Shade actually uses this exact same build in our current campaign right now. She's actually doing very well for herself in using these uh, tactics to attack your enemy. So this is pretty much how you'll use the gang overview on using this gang on the tabletop using this kind of tactics. And with that, you're just going to dominate. You're going to be able to have a very defensive list to protect you from all comers who are shooting at you no matter what. You're going to be to close that distance and assault your enemy forward and just finish them off in close quarters battle. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the reason why this list is so powerful. All right, so in conclusion, these are really excellent miniatures on a lot of character. These Sisters of Battle Novitiates look really, really cool in the way that their sculpt is done as well. And using these ladies as female Cawdor or Redemptionists or even as Alcaus Cawdor and Outcast is an excellent way to actually use these miniatures as well. They're full of character. They have some really cool looking sculpts and they also will really dominate on the tabletop as well, especially if you go with the list I just provided you guys. I've been seeing this list being played on the tabletop, my little sister Shade, and she's been kicking butt and taking names with this list. So it's absolutely fantastic as well and like i said before the ability to play multiple games with one single boss set of miniatures is the ultimate goal you're gonna be able to play multiple games have a lot of fun playing those games and at the same time saving yourself a ton of money while doing so as well and if anybody gives you any uh naysay or any pressure about it tell them to take off and grow up all right because this is a game when it's all said and done and you know times are tough and uh, money is kind of scarce so you know, they just keep their opinions to themselves. So there you guys have it. That's going to do it for this one. As always, please feel free to like, comment, and or subscribe. Your guys' input is invaluable to us as always. Also, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, as well as blogger.com for all the latest, greatest hop news related to this channel. That's going to do this for you guys. I will catch you guys next one. Peace out and stay classy.